Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Dynamic Effort Squat and Deadlift Day. Got a lot to talk about and only 25 minutes to do it so let's get the uh, other thing knocked out of the way. For those of you who like these videos, please remember to click like down below. Actually if you just watch it at all, click like. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. You guys don't always do that. You don't always offset the loser ass virgin who runs up hot. You don't let that one guy beat you. Come on. You're sound and click like. Now, back over to the training. Back over to the training. We did the safety bar today. And I ran off my last percentages. And you guys know I hate this bar, but what is it that we need to do? We know this bar addresses my biggest weak link I feel in my squat. That upper back, that T-spine. Now, obviously, we're addressing all the upper back size for the pressing end. Building all that musculature up, but I need to make sure the whole T-spine is strong. So, I got in and did this bar, and I need to run it for a while. Fortunately, it didn't hurt as bad as previously. So, I've actually made pretty good inroads uh, as far as building that area up. And we noticed that, too, because I'm going to do good mornings with it in a minute. And it's the strongest I've ever been with this bar at good mornings. And my T-spine still limited me. Like it gave out. Still it was a PR. But, so what did we do? We did the final wave of this. And it's okay, I don't mind rotating stuff in. Um, because I mean, I may be rotating back and forth between sumo and conventional in the same waves. But I'm probably going to need to do both. Let's come over and look at what happened. Now the sumo the other day, you guys know. You guys know. My footing and everything wasn't ideal. I wanted to just kind of test and see how it would feel doing similar to my box squat setup. So I actually used the same footing I used in my box. I wasn't super happy with it, but the sumo needs work. We know the safety bar is my weakest squat by far. The most I've ever hit with a safety bar on a box is 445, by the way. So I just plugged it in at 450 for this. I have hit 552 with the buffalo bar, which is usually identical to your straight bar. Hit 535 with the Cambridge bar. Okay, I'm gonna. I need to max on this bar again. I need to max on it. I'll probably do it coming up this week. Uh, we'll max out. We'll have percentages. I'll run speed work with this bar for a while. I'm not worried about the lack of lower body development that might happen. I'm afraid of if I use less weight, even for the speed work. Because number one, I'm doing tons and tons and tons of accessory volume for my entire lower body. My legs would probably grow maximally off all my accessory work at this point. Not worried about it. Number two, I felt it in my quads. Okay, what is it that I said that I felt with the cambered bar? The cambered bar max, I felt it in my low back and my hamstrings. I felt this in my upper back and my quads. Which makes sense, different biomechanics. So, what are my weak links for each bar? Okay, what are my weak links? The buffalo bar feels like upper back and hips. Okay, that's going to be the closest one to my straight bar. It's going to be the same, really, because they have the same, the, the weight moves the same. The cambered bar, my hamstrings, and my low back. Easy enough to fix. We hammer those all the time anyways. And my camber bar is closer to my normal max than it should be. So we know I'm strong in those areas. Hey, I'm way too close together. For, for it to be a weak link, it's not. This is my biggest weak link. And what is it? Quads and upper back. Now, my quads aren't a weak link in general. I guess if I was forced to use this bar, they might end up being some of a, what of a weak link. But we're working on them. But the upper back, even more so. We still feel that upper back big time. Big time. So I feel the quads, but they don't feel like a weak link with this, doing this. We'll find out when I max. But I can feel that upper back. So we need to keep working it. And I need to max on this bar. And I need to get this bar above 500 pounds. Goal. Deadlifts. Uh, these were heavy today because I went on the final part of the wave. I have started adjusting my footing. Something I was going to point out, I use a certain footing on my deadlift that helps give good pop off the floor. It also can cause soft lockouts. Not so much today. Look at that. 
I'm looking at where my conventional deadlift tends to have the most issues these days. And it's that last few inches, that loft at lockout. So we know that foot spacing and foot angle matters, especially the toe angle. Now, foot angle, why is the reason that we bring it in really close so that we can turn the knees out and still miss the arms? Well, with this position, because my grip, my grip right there at shoulder width, because my toes aren't turned out, I can clear my quads. So really, we want technically the widest stance that you can use the perfect grip with. Because we don't want our grip to splay out. I want my grip straight down, so I'm right on the edge of the neural, like, like a close grip edge. Okay, good grip, but I can still clear the knee. So that's a good spacing. But the other thing is when we go in real tight uh, with, with the feet, we can turn the toes way out. Well, I'm not having trouble through that point. So I felt like these felt real strong. And keeping in mind, this is like 530 plus on the lockout for those curious. It's 160 pounds of chain and there's almost none of it on the ground. 375 on the bar for my speed work today. And I locked them good. They were nice, strong, fast lockouts. Hey, okay, that's what we need to see. Now my hands hurt on this. I was worried my grip felt a little off today, but we're training that grip really hard. Keep training that grip hard. And so next time I deadlift, I need that grip to be on point. I feel like grip has been the limiting factor. And, and even now, looking at these, the way that they feel, that, that lockout's been a little soft lately. It's not when I take this foot stance. And it has to do with the way that we recruit the glutes. Okay, toes out gives you more pop off the floor. To anyone who wasn't aware. Toes forward tends to give a little better lockout. So you can tune this to where you're strongest and weakest on a deadlift. Right as far as your foot stance goes and your angles. Most people are really weak off the floor so it makes sense. I'm really not. I mean, look at my deficit. Even my deficit, 625. I need to be able to lock it. So that, and then, I, I bet the strength is there for that. My grip, I've got to keep hammering that grip. Grip, 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 grip. The problem is, though, training my grip so much that it, recover, it has recovery issues can be a problem, too. I need to be aware of that. So I think for me, it's, it's being careful of not doing too much grip work on the weekends, for example. Because a lot of times I've got a max pull on a Tuesday. I need to make sure those weekends are not beating my grip into the ground. Right? Just something to be aware of. Something to think about. I try to get as much of it as I can is on, in, in the middle of the week. I try to do more of it on right now on my squat and deadlift days. But we're getting a lot of it with the, uh, the rowing. Right, we're getting a lot of it with the rowing. So then I'm like, let me try this. I'm not used to doing 245, by the way. Don't I never really went over 225 even with this bar, ever. 245. I'm like, let me see what I can get. I got 11 reps. The 11th rep was pretty much failing. It hit those things, and I had to almost cheat my form to get it up. So I'm definitely weaker because what I do, 20 reps with 275. With the uh, one of the other bars. But it's harder. Look at the angle. I've got a longer moment arm and all that weight on my upper back and neck. So again, weight that I should be able to easily crank out 20 with with some of the other bars was 11. And I'm only doing one set today. The whole point was what? Just to get in and do it. To get in and do it just to get some of that upper back. We're going to be having to crack on my neck in place. It's like, but it's not as bad as it was. Before, that would have been making me like see black spots, the pressure on my neck. It's a lot better. So we've strengthened that area tremendously. But I have a long way to go. Goal. Get to sets of 20 with that weight with that bar. Okay. What are we weak at? Well, we get the safety bar squat, the safety bar good morning, the sumo deadlift. I need to work all those areas. We need to make sure they get worked. Now, this will help with the safety bar squat as far as any potential quad, but I need just my quads to grow in general. Quads, hips, right? This helps with the hip and the quad, making sure they're big. I'm not that worried about quads right now, to be fair. But 
not going to hurt me to have more, and especially since it works my hip. It works the glute. Because it's high step up. That's the whole point. I'm stepping up onto a 20 inch box. That's taller than a bench. Okay, look at that deep angle, deep knee angle, well below parallel. Working those hip extensors with a lot of volume, and it's recoverable because there's very, very little weight up top. Even now, I'm slowly working it up, like five pounds every workout. It's just 75 pounds on the bar. But for one-legged step-ups, for someone who weighs 220, it's a lot of weight for high reps. Um, so again, working the quads, working the hips. All right, we need to get good at everything we're bad at. And I didn't get into what I'm bad with on benching. We know it's wide grip benching. We're addressing that. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, I had some people come in and say, oh, I don't think you need flies. It's like the West Side guys do flies. And they bench even in a shirt. What's the problem? We do these easier movements to recover from. It's not the case of saying, well, let me just find a movement to work this. Like, we don't come in and go, oh, yep, my, my hips and quads need some extra work, so I'm going to do a bunch of high rep, high bar squats. No, we don't do that. We maybe do one exercise that's hard, hard on our recovery as far as our supplemental lifts go. In this case, good morning or floor presses, right? Everything else needs to be easy on recovery. We need to just build the muscles up that we need to, to build with a lot of volume and a lot of recoverable volume. So flies are easier to recover from than a lot of other chest exercises. Single joint movements are relatively easy on your system and on your joints. Some of them can be hard on joints, but it's because it's a bad movement. Okay. I won't get into some of those. You guys should know what some of them are, stuff you don't ever see me recommend. But in this case, you know, we don't, we don't come in and tr find the hardest exercise to do. We find the easiest to recover from. I mean, I could do hip belt squats here, but I don't like setting it up. It's way more work to set it up. It's more hassle to set it up. This is easier for me to just get it done. And it has its own merits and its own strengths. If someone were to say, which is better? Well, you can't say. They both bring a lot to the table as a supplemental lift. Okay, they both bring a lot to the table. Hip belt squat because it replicates a squat with no axial loading in terms of the lower body. Okay. This has a small amount of axial loading but not enough to worry about. Gives us the isolateral. Gives that isolateral movement so that we know each leg is, is evenly strong. Okay. And it's just nice to get that deep angle because at that deep angle we have the most weight on there. Right, but uh, again, good exercise for bringing those areas up. Quad and hip is really what I care about. It's it's actually contributing to glutes quite a bit, though. To be fair, to glute exercise also. And I'm not quite taking these to failure. They're challenging. It's hard to say because they're burning by this point. You know, someone had asked me, "Why do you alternate legs? Why not?" That way, I make sure everything's even. I make sure I get the maximum workload per set. Right? I'm going to get the, the most work done per set. And since it lets each me recover a hair between each rep, I can probably crank out more total reps with the same weight. And yes, that matters. The studies say it matters. The research says it matters. So it lets me maximize the tension. Maximize the work done. And that's how we grow, is I need these muscles to grow. All right, I need them to grow. Also, you know, if we want to stand there and, and talk about, oh, maybe you not, not, might not be getting, getting the deep metabolic fatigue that you could get if you just did each leg at a time. I drag a sled a couple times a week. I get all the deep metabolic fatigue in, in Metcon that I could want from a sled drag. And this still has a conditioning component, even doing it alternating legs. Believe me, it does. You're, you're going to be breathing pretty hard. But I'm concerned with straight hypertrophy here. This is purely a hypertrophy exercise for me. Again, to make me better at squatting. So I keep having to scratch my face here. I kept itching on these for some reason. My face kept itching. It's rather annoying. It bothered me a bit. So, yeah. 
these do what I need them to do and I'm going to keep trying to progress on it. I'm going to try to keep adding five pounds, keep adding five pounds and see if I can keep maintaining this number of reps. And I need these, especially, you know, changing barbells over and doing my speed work with, with the safety bar. I need to make sure I'm getting plenty of lower body development, hitting all the possible weak links. You know, but obviously I make pos posterior chain of priority. I always do good mornings before these. You know, the same thing. Um, people will say, well, why are you training this? Just like they're talking about the pecs. Why are you training your pecs without your ham your, your triceps are even bigger weakness? Well, they're both a weakness, but I train my triceps more. Okay, train them more. Just like here, the hamstrings are going to get more training. And I did five sets of 20 today. I've never done that before. I've never even attempted a four set after doing 20. But the other day, what did I do? I did two sets of 20, then I got 23 on the third set. My neck is still a little, like, what did you do to me with that bar? You know, it's a lot of pressure on it. And I couldn't believe I was able to get through all these. Not only that, I think I got like 22 on the fifth set. So my hamstrings are not a weak link. So that's kind of the thing, you know, we could talk about what do you feel on an exercise, right? Well, I feel my hamstrings on certain exercises, but to say that my hamstrings are limiting me on any movement, you guys have seen what I've done with some of the bars on Good Mornings. What what bar hits the, the hamstrings the hardest, arguably? That Cambridge bar. I do sets of 20 with 275 with a Good Morning. Right here, in a single workout on a hard setting. This is a hard setting on the glute ham race. The plate at the bottom of the pads, my knee stays above it. Okay, it's pressing down on the top of it at the bottom when I get to the top. 102 reps. Okay, 102 reps of these. So anyone who wants to try to say, well, you know, I don't think these are that hard, and I think I've got strong hamstrings. Well, here's your test. Put it on a harder setting like I put it on a setting to where your D's do not drop below the pads at the, when you get to the top. Because that's where I'm at. My knees are pressing against the side of the pad. But my knees are above the, the plate stuck to the bottom of the pad. Those pads are like bolted down onto a plate, a steel plate, and my knees are above it. Okay, Try to get to 100 reps in a single workout on these, with any combination, any combination of reps, even if you've got to do 20 sets of five. Okay, They're hard. So I was surprised that I'm up to be able, able to get over 100 reps on these, particularly doing four sets of 20 and then all out on that final set. Um, hamstring work capacity is just climbing and I need it to, you know, this, this will give me a lot on my squatting. I feel like this exercise will help with my squats. Should help with deadlifts. Even if deadlifts, if nothing else, it'll help prevent a, a hamstring tear. So that's kind of the other thing too. All these lifts have been improving. I'm so much stronger on all of these lower body lifts than I was even when I hit the 615 deadlift. Remember, I got that 625 deficit, which my grip feels like a limit. But the 615 deadlift, I am way stronger on glute ham raises. I am way stronger on good mornings. Right? I think up until then, probably the best I had ever done was like, 225 for an all-out set of 10 before on a good morning and I was pushing them before now I do 275 for 20 reps twice the reps with 50 more pounds same thing here I mean me the idea of doing with the hard setting getting 20 of these I bet you I could only do about seven or eight of these when I hit that deadlift now I'm doing five sets of 20 my grip is the only thing limiting me on the deadlift, I feel like. My grip. Now, people will say, so why train all these things? Because I need them for more than one lift. And why wouldn't I? I can keep building my grip up. And if all of these muscles, things like my hamstrings, stay way ahead, then I'm ahead of the curve. 
and you can never have hamstrings that are too big or too strong because even then let's say oh well your hamstring strength is so strong that it's not even helping anymore not even mattering because every it's just overpowers everything else okay well then my hamstrings will be bigger right that'll let me bounce off of them at the bottom of a squat hamstrings will even increase your squat just pure size of them will gets us moving out of the bottom plus just all the metabolic work in general I mean if I'm going to chase maximum body composition that's what I've said I'm doing to be a better lifter I need as much muscle as I can put on my frame and get it leaner 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 well the more muscle I can gain particularly in my big muscles like that and especially with the higher volume work better my nutrient partitioning is going to be that's going to make being leaner recompositioning doing weight cuts easier later doing weight cuts will be a lot easier with that later because it's hard to cut water weight from fat it's really easy to cut water weight from muscle tissue and reload it it's way easier for, for dropping water weight if you need to to make weight so why wouldn't I Particularly a muscle that when it's weak makes you prone to injury. No, I'll just overdevelop it. I'll overdevelop it. Besides, everyone's quad dominant already. Where is a species we're quad dominant? So, it's fine. Correcting it always something that could always potentially be a weakness. And in this case, it's become quite a strength. But we don't quit training it. We know that we need it better. Again, it's, it's never going to be a detriment to have more hamstring. So push it. Push it to the bleeding edge. If nothing else, my squat will improve from it out of the bottom. Um, by the time I got to these, my grip and everything was dying. Because again, the, the rowing yesterday and then the, the bicep PR for the curls, getting more volume in for the new weight. These, by the second set, I was really, my biceps were pumped, my lats were pumped, and I was struggling to even finish the second set. I got to the third set, and I didn't get my five sets today. I got to about rep 16, and that's it. I had such a pump in my bicep and lats that they didn't want to contract anymore. And you know what? We'll deal with it. That's 18 sets of rows this week. 18 sets of inverted rows will have to be enough. Hey, they'll have to be enough. Uh, but my forearms were pumped, biceps were pumped, the lats were pumped, and, and just not wanting to fire anymore. We reached their limits, but that's okay. I've already done some extra grip work before doing this voiceover, because I always get a little food in and stuff, so I've been grabbing my Captain's of Crush Grippers, squeezing those. I'll do a few sets with those for today, and then maybe, maybe some pinch block work later, or some pinch block work tomorrow. But I think some pinch block work thrown in, I don't want to go overboard with it, do the captains of crush grippers definitely on uh, my dead and squat and deadlift days. And I think definitely on max effort days, I want to work that axle bar for, for uh, again, really, really heavy low reps for the double overhand deadlift. Because, again, it won't tax me. It's not really a problem because it's such a lightweight relative to my deadlift. But it just absolutely crushes my grip within a few seconds so it's really forcing me to grip maximally for just a few seconds which is what you need for a deadlift some of my other stuff is a bit more for time you know over time so we'll get a good mix in there um, and keep that grip moving where the grip is going to have to i'm going to have to keep working it keep working it and then we did our reverse hypers and these were hard today after doing all those hamstrings they were tough but I did them, and then for people curious, well, do I do anything else there? Yeah, I did some some band pull-aparts for my rear delts and everything and my shoulders in between these sets. I did like three sets of those of approximately 20 to failure. So that we also, again, get the extra rear delt work to go with the rows and to finish the week up with it. Because I try not to do stuff like that on my upper body days because I'm going to row again on these so a good I try to mostly do just the band press downs and stuff on those days later so I save stuff like the extra rear delt work um, to do on things like doing them at the end in between uh, like my sets of reverse hypers because they're easy I'm already resting for a couple minutes between sets um, so doing something like that's easy to work in and it's not going to interfere with my sets here at all but again these were even tough today they were tough of my normal work after doing 
five sets of 20 on the glute ham raise. So my hamstrings got a lot of work and my upper back, my whole T-spine got a lot of work. Like it, it was giving out, it was giving out on those good mornings. So when I got to that last rep, it's like my T-spine just kind of gave out. It didn't want to, it didn't want to move. It's like, what did you do to me? So we need to fix those weaknesses. We know what we got. What do you do? You take the things that you're weak at and get strong at them. So, you know, people say that when I say you take the lifts that you're weakest at, I do mean that literally. If you're weak with a specific bar, you're weak with a closed grip, a wide grip, a narrow stance, a wide stance, whatever it happens to be, you need to get strong at it. This is how we shore up our weak links. This is how we get brutally strong. Like this is how you get world-class strong all the way across the board. And that's my goal. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.